good, YouTube? It's your girl Nick coming to you guys today with a quick chat about episodes 7 through 10 of Monster Dharma, the series on Netflix. It's so much. It is so, so much. Um, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. First of all, you know what, before I get into it, I felt a little bit, I don't know, cute today. Let me step back so y'all can see my outfit. What y'all think? Alright, that was the nice, good moment. But, um, I mean, depending on what you like. But anyway, these last four episodes, we go into we go into a victim that was, we get into a victim that was never even mentioned in any of in um anything else that I've ever seen about Jeffrey Dahmer. His name was Dean Vaughn. He was a young man who moved to the Dagon building on the floor above Jeffrey. Met Jeffrey in the hallway and he turns up strangled to death in his apartment. And Jeffrey said it wasn't him who did it. But that it's been a cold case that they never solved. I was so angry at that part because to be honest with y'all, when he first moved in, Miss Glenda approached, they showed him here, Miss Glenda approached him and told him beware of certain um, people. But I wish she would have been more descriptive and actually told him, you know, be, be careful of the guy in 218, Jeff. He's very charismatic. And, um, I hear all kinds of noises all through the night from over there, and I'm not sure. She could have told him about the boy that tried to escape and um, ended up, um, and that's Connery. So, I think you pronounce his last name, Semitophone, Satimophone, or something like that. She could have told him about that, like all those instances and stuff, just so he can be on the lookout and never engage with Jeffrey in any kind of way. That's what she could have did, but she did it. And that just made me so, like, not angry at it, but I just was disappointed because, like, maybe that could have been another life saved. You know? And then it was just so crazy because we get more of the father knowing something not right with Jeffrey, but still trying leading Jeffrey and giving him all, the, trying to give him the answers on how to fix himself or that he can get treatment. As if he didn't kill all these people. It was just, it was sad. I mean, we had um, Connerick's brother having nightmares about his time when he was there at the grandmother's house and stuff. Or wherever Jeffrey had him at. And he walked out and he was able to escape. We, you know, we see that, and he had nightmares about his, you know, himself and the fact that he did escape. It didn't look like the father was in the nightmare or either the father was having his own nightmares and stuff. And then it broke my heart to see the mother sitting at the table, cutting all of, cutting him out of all the freaking pictures, saying, because we don't talk about him no more. It's like we moving, we, we try to act like it didn't happen. That, that shit burnt me up. And then it was super sad to see the victim's impact statements and stuff. And that lady who acted out, um, Rita Isbell, whose brother Elroy was the one that um, he first tried to do the lobotomy shit on. That, whoever that actress is, she deserves because she sure did. She reenacted that scene almost to the T of how that lady really was in that courtroom. Also, they didn't like that they, they had an episode 
where they basically showed uh, John Wayne Gacy, who, you know, worked as a freaking clown, but was also basically doing the same thing as Jeffrey in the way that he was luring guys to his place and um, with promises of a job or saying it was a job interview and killing them and raping them. That, it was just sickening. And how he got caught. I thought that what they were showing us, I thought it was going to be one of the ones that got away. Because I did read that one person got away from him. And they remembered the street or whatever. And so they was able to give the cops a description of the street that this man lived on. And when they went there to investigate, that's when they smelled the odor and found bodies in the crawl space and stuff like that. At John Wayne Gacy's house. And he had killed 33 people. Just disgusting and sickening. But anyway, the other part that bothered me is Jeffrey's mother. How she had the audacity to go to one of the victim's family's home and apologize, but also in the same breath, ask them can they write a statement that he go to a mental institution and not to prison so the judge can have leniency on Jeff. What the fuck are you smoking, man? This it just oh it just it just made me even more mad. And we had um, Reverend Jesse Jackson in this um in this part too, which was great. Um, I don't even remember him going down there and doing all he did, but I'm gonna tell you this thing that burned me up the most. They put on. They put the tenants out of the building because the city wanted to tear down the place so that they can forget about the horrors that happened in that apartment building. And they promised the people that they was going to build a park or something right there. And they never did. They just left it as an empty lot. They never, they made all them people move out of there for nothing and left it as an empty lot. Then you got the people that's fans of him, writing them, sending them money and shit. Like, what he did was a good thing. Like, what is y'all thinking? And then him talking to his father and the lawyer, and they trying to come up with a fucking plan to make it seem as if he had temporary insanity. And it was a mental illness, so he can go to a mental institution for the rest of his life instead of going to prison. And I'm glad, in a way, that... He had sense enough. I don't know if it was the narcissism. I don't know what it was. But he had sense enough to say, you know what? I was a sober and sound mind when I did those things. I'm not going to lie and say I had mental health issues. Because I didn't. I'm of sound mind and body. I knew what I was doing. I knew exactly what I was doing. And then, he did go to jail. He got his time. And he ended up. Now, at one point, he told the father he didn't believe in God. But then when he got to jail, he started believing and even got freaking baptized in prison. And then that, and then he was making... He was... He had a whole lot of shit going on because he couldn't read the room. Because those jokes he was making in the, um, in the um, cafeteria or whatever it was in the prison, them was not good jokes, Jeffrey. They was not. I said, oh, God. I didn't, I also, how in the world was it that at the same time we see Miss Glenda getting an award for what she tried to do to save all those men from Jeffrey, from what she tried to do to alert the police that what he was doing, she ain't got an award with the two fucking cops that took Conrad back up to his apartment and didn't do their due diligence. They got an award too. How? That was a smack in the face. The fact that they got suspended or sent home with full pay while they were being investigated. I was like, wow. But that's how they do, though. That's how they do us. They don't give a fuck about us. 
they don't they don't give a fuck about us about us people of color they just don't yeah this thing made me mad y'all it really made me mad Evan Peters you are such an amazing talent as an actor you do deserve some awards for this You do. Because this was something. Mm -mm -mm. This was something. Whew, this was something. But that's all I got, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next thing I decide to try to review, recap, or talk about. This was, it was not easy getting through this series. It really wasn't. It really wasn't. Oh, before I go, I do like that at the end. I mean, they put fictitious stuff in there, as we all know. Because the one guy who did get away from Jeffrey, Tracy, they showed him working at, like, a a crisis center or community center or whatever, talking to a guy about his, um, his health and, you know, trying to go out there and live his life after being diagnosed with HIV. And... They showed him in the club, having a good time, and then he seen, he felt like he imagined that he saw Jeffrey in the club, and it was like they ended it on a positive note for him, but we all know in real life, and well, if you've Googled, I Googled him when I, after I watched the first couple of episodes. No, after I watched the first episode, I Googled him to see where he was today, and um, I see that he had, he had issues, he was homeless. Um, him and another homeless man pushed another homeless man off a bridge and the man died. Like, he's had issues since this all happened. It's just crazy. It's crazy, yo. Mm, and shouts out to Karen Melina White, who played Tony Hughes' mother. She's come a long way. I always liked her as Charmaine on The Cosby Show and on A Different World, you know. And she played Jewel on The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And she married Jazz on The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And, um, she, like, this was a, this was a very different role for her. And I think, I, I mean, it's not, I think, I liked it. I liked, I liked what she did with the role or whatever, but, um, yeah. If y'all didn't already, please click that like button on your way in or on your way out get in the comments and tell me what you thought about this series did it take you days or did you were you able to binge watch the whole thing in one set um and just whatever it is that you thought about it um how you feel about you know things then and how things are now for us when we tell something and all that kind of stuff like that. Will we? Do you think today, thirty some odd years later, do you think we'd be heard? Do you think this could have happened in today's time? Let me know. I see y'all in the next thing I decide to review. Peace out, y'all.